This is the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, a Core XY 3D printer capable of printing at insane speeds while maintaining high accuracy. The X1 Carbon was both announced and launched this year following an extremely successful Kickstarter campaign. And this is the P1P, Bamboo Lab's latest printer that surprised many including myself when it was announced just two months after all of the backers printers were delivered. The P1P looks and shares a lot with the X1 Carbon, but at $699 it will cost you $500 less. This makes it incredibly competitive when you compare it to similarly priced 3D printers on the market. Bamboo Lab sent this printer out over a month ago for testing, so I've had some time to see what it's capable of. In today's video we will be diving into the P1P. We'll go over the printer's specs, what setup was like, how it has performed and printed, and I will give you my overall thoughts based off my experience with it so far. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Thank you to Voxel PLA for sponsoring today's video. Voxel PLA is aiming to make 3D printing more accessible with a reliable and affordable filament. This filament has been used exclusively in a 150 machine print farm and is now available for purchase. They currently offer their PLA Plus in black, white, gray, red, and blue with additional colors coming next year. My personal favorites are Fire Truck Red and Cool White. Voxel PLA is priced at $16.99 per kilogram and at two spools shipping is free within the US. Bulk discounts for 10 or more spools are also offered and there is a dedicated form available for this. Links will be in the description to voxelpla.com so that you can find out more or pick up your own. The P1P in many ways is using the X1 Carbon's core with a lot of the extra bells and whistles removed. The P1P has the same rigid steel frame and the exact same motion system down to the two carbon rods used for the X axis. They have identical build volumes of 256 by 256 by 256 millimeters with a max advertised tool head speed of 500 millimeters per second with acceleration capping at 20,000. The P1P has a similar tool head with a magnetic cover, dual gear direct drive extruder, filament runout sensor, and a near identical looking hot end capable of reaching 300 Celsius that ships with a stainless steel nozzle. Unlike the X1 Carbon's extruder that uses hardened steel gears, the gears in it, the P1P extruder are not hardened and because of that, Bamboo does not recommend using abrasive materials with it. There is a version of the hot end available for purchase with a hardened steel nozzle, but your X1 Carbon hot end will not be interchangeable with the P1P due to a different tool head board and plug used. I would love to see an option to swap out the extruder on the P1P with one that has hardened steel gears to allow you to print with those abrasive filaments. For cooling, it uses the exact same heatsink fan and 5015 blower. The P1P includes the same magnetic flex plate system, however, it ships with their powder coated PEI bed instead of the engineering and cool plate. Personally, I much prefer the powder coated PEI bed over the other plate and I've since swapped out my X1 Carbon so it's also been using a powder coated PEI bed for some time now. The P1P's max bed temp is 100 Celsius while the X1 Carbon's capable of reaching 110 Celsius. The X1 Carbon prints ABS with a bed temperature of 90 Celsius and I've had no issues with it so the cap of 100 Celsius to me isn't a problem. The P1P still has vibration compensation, auto bed leveling with automatic Z offset and power loss recovery. It is also compatible with the AMS material station and hub that will allow you to print with up to 16 filaments if you purchase four of those AMS units. We dove pretty heavily into the whole AMS ecosystem and so if you're interested in finding out more about that system, I will have the video linked in the description down below. You are still able to print wirelessly through the Bamboo app or Studio Slicer, as well as locally with a micro SD card. Unlike the X1 Carbon that has the micro SD card slot on the back of the LCD screen, it's on the top of the P1P. And personally, I much prefer that over the X1 Carbon. For me, it's just been a lot easier to actually reach and get the micro SD card in and out of the printer. As for the things on the X1 Carbon that have been removed from the P1P, we have the LEDs, camera, auxiliary cooling fan, panels and doors, touchscreen interface, micro LiDAR, and the chamber fan with the carbon filter. The good news is that the LED, the camera, and the auxiliary fan can be added onto the P1P at any time. Based on the specs page for the P1P versus X1, it appears it will be a slightly different camera with a lower 720p resolution. 
The current X1 carbon camera is available in the Bamboo Lab store for $50, and that auxiliary fan is also available as a replacement for $30, so I anticipate the version that you can buy for the P1P will be priced somewhere around there. Much like the X1 Carbon, the P1P is a loud printer, especially when it's reaching those high speeds. The lights and camera are a really nice feature to have, especially if you're planning on placing this printer in another room, so that way you can periodically check on it. I also highly recommend that auxiliary fan. This can have a huge effect on surface quality and overhangs, especially when you are printing PLA at those higher speeds. The installation process for these upgrades is pretty simple, and Bamboo Labs provides official STL files to print out for mounting. As for the panels or mod plates, one of the things that was advertised pretty heavily in the launch video of the P1P was that there were a lot of different ways that you can customize the look of the P1P. Depending on your use and personal preference, you can either leave the printer completely bare or Bamboo has released a handful of different plate options for this if you want to upgrade it to give it a pop of color or just a bit of a unique look. Bamboo Lab has also publicly released a step file of the P1P frame so that you can model your own designs if you want. As someone that prints a fair amount of ABS, I'm hoping to cut out acrylic panels for the top, the sides, and the front to make it fully enclosed. I imagine it will only be a matter of time for other companies to release their own enclosure kits if Bamboo Labs decides not to release an official version of their own. Bamboo also has printable standoffs that will allow you to mount the AMS on the top of the printer. The touchscreen on the X1 line has been replaced with a bit more familiar interface that uses physical buttons. The buttons are fairly responsive, but I'm not crazy about the directional arrows and found myself accidentally triggering the wrong direction button when I first got the printer. Overall, it serves its purpose and will allow you to check on the printer and start prints locally via the micro SD card, but I definitely do miss the nice colorful touchscreen on the X1 Carbon. The biggest thing that was removed from the P1P that you are not able to upgrade to is the micro LiDAR. This is a pretty unique feature of the X1 series and was used heavily in marketing early on. However, after roughly a month of using this printer without the micro LiDAR, I can confidently say there's not a lot I really feel like I'm missing out on. The primary purpose of the LiDAR was for redundancy when level the bed, pressure advance which adjusts the flow at different accelerations, and scanning the first layer for possible defects. The automatic bed leveling on the P1P is as good as any other 3D printer I've used, and paired with that powder coated PEI bed, the adhesion has been great. The first layer scan has saved me one time on the X1 Carbon, but for the most part it just adds additional time to my prints and I find myself disabling it. As for pressure advance or linear advance, this is something that I am really curious as to how they're going to do a manual implementation. On printers running Clipper, you typically print out a cube, take some measurements and input that value to adjust for rounded corners. I anticipate Bamboo is going to be releasing some sort of a similar test print that you'll print out, take a measurement from, and plug it into the slicer. Currently, whatever they are doing with the firmware and the slicer without me doing any sort of manual pressure advance, the quality has been really good. As far as unboxing and setup goes, the P1P arrived packaged very nicely, and since the release of my original X1 Carbon, Bamboo Labs has definitely had some improvements on their overall packaging to make sure that the printers arrive safely. Setup is pretty similar to the X1 Carbon. You remove a couple of bolts from the bed that have it mounted in place to protect it during transit, attach the Bowden or the reverse Bowden tubing, power on the machine, scan a QR code to pair it to your account, run the initial calibration from the screen, and you are up and ready to be printing. There are a few pre-sliced files on the SD card, and much like on the X1 Carbon, I started with the Benchy to see how it turned out. The speed is still crazy to me even after all this time using bamboo printers. They did slow down the Benchy ever so slightly, which I imagine is because there is no auxiliary fan on the side, at least when you buy the P1P before you add it, but it still finished in under 20 minutes and looked great. I then went on to print a few more pre-sliced files while I waited on the updated Bamboo Studio slicer that had the P1P profile. I printed out a few complex print in place models with default settings of 200 to 300 millimeters per second and was really happy with the results that I was getting. Other than the screen and it looking a bit more naked than my X1 Carbon, the overall experience between the two printers is very similar. Then I ran into an issue. I started a print that was a print in place Christmas tree, everything was going well. I went off to bed and in the morning when I went to go check on it, the print was only halfway done and the hot end was not printing. The tool head was just basically stalled over that print. I saw no error. The percentage of the print still showed that it was incomplete and both the hot end and the bed were still at print temp. I tried pausing and resuming the print a couple of times, trying to get it out of its sort of frozen state, and it did move to the back corner and go back to where it was, but I could not get the print to continue. 
I ended up killing the print, restarting the machine and running the exact same print and it finished without any issues. Then I fired off a fairly long Jack Sparrow print, which started out going great and in about an hour in it did the exact same thing where it sort of just froze in place. This time I played around with it a little bit more and discovered if I hard reset the machine I could get it to continue which it did go for a couple more hours before it froze in place again. At this point whatever was happening was repeatable and clearly a bug so I reported it to Bamboo Lab. They had me dump a log file off of the printer on Friday, and by Monday I had a firmware update ready for the printer. When I asked what the issue was, they said that it was related to RTC memory. With that firmware update, I ran the Jack Sparrow print again, along with four to five fairly long prints, and have not experienced that same bug or any other issues. I haven't heard anybody else that received the P1P around the same time as me for review having the same issue, so I'm not entirely sure what in my unit caused that error in the first place. Other than that bug that was thankful able to be resolved over the weekend, my experience with the P1P has been very positive. I had hoped this printer would be a few hundred less than the X1 Carbon and was really shocked to see its price point of $699. This is $100 less than the Prusa MK3S Plus kit, which is just insane. I've really enjoyed using my X1 Carbon this past year, but think for many, especially those not too concerned with ABS or abrasive printing, the P1P checks a lot of boxes and is going to be really hard to compete with. All that this needs is an enclosure and I have no doubt that it's also going to be an ABS beast. The P1P also looks like a great option for a print farm printer. The price to performance that you get with this is really hard to ignore and if I was going to be selling printed products again or offer any kind of print services, I would definitely be considering some of these units. I really think that many of the other budget 3D printer manufacturers are going to have to step up their game to even be able to compete with the bare bones P1P. And that has been the Bamboo Lab P1P. I hope that I was able to answer the majority of your questions. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, if I don't know the answer, I have no problem reaching out directly to the manufacturer to try to get those answers for you. Also, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below on the P1P compared to other similar price printers out there, as well as compared to the X1 Carbon. I'm curious to anyone that is an X1 Carbon owner, is this something that you're interested in or you're happy with the X1 Carbon and you wouldn't want to settle for any less features than what that comes with? On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys!